Hello, this is MechaJ11, and today I'm going to do a video about upcoming projects, um, some stuff I just got, some rambling about YouTube and Google and, um, let's see, AdSense, stuff like that, partnership. So, yeah, all that will be in this video. So, um, yeah. So, I guess I'll start out that I recently turned 18, so kind of cool there. I'm able to vote, and... Um, buy lottery tickets now, so that's kind of cool, as well as um, get an AdSense account, which I just did, so um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But anyways, first I'm going to go over some of the projects that are coming up. These are some presents that I got. I'm a little bit weird, I suppose you could say. I don't ask for um, the average things that normal teens do, like iPads and um, video games and stuff like that. I don't I do not do that kind of stuff. I don't have a, um, I don't have any video games or PS3 or Xbox or anything like that. I just only game I play is Minecraft a little tiny bit, probably like less than an hour a week, but yeah, that's about it. But um, anyways, so I basically just kind of accumulate a list of stuff I want on eBay, and then my parents just bought it for me for my birthday, so kind of cool. This is about, probably about $70 worth of stuff here that I bought, but um, or had my parents buy. But um, anyways, so yeah, these are going to be used in upcoming projects, so you guys are going to see these, so actually they're kind of presents for you guys, too. But anyways, these are one of the more exciting things. These are IRFP 260N MOSFETs. These can handle, I believe, 60 amps, and they were um, suggested by High 1 Voltage 1 Rules, so they're, they've got to be good. Um, these are going to be for the ZDS driver, as you might have known, the MOSFETs on that blew up in the video, so um, yeah. So, new MOSFETs for that, so hopefully I'm going to get some real nice arcs out of that when I get that running. So that's going to be an upcoming project that you guys are going to need to look for. Um, these are some TIP31 transistors, 25 of those, and there's 10 of these. Um, these are actually probably the most expensive thing of the whole buy, about $12, I think, for all those. But, um, yeah, so these are some TIP31C transistors, and those will be used for uh, just general stuff and... Um, Tesla coils. So they're excited Tesla coils, so I'll be doing some more videos of that someday. Um, and then the rest of this stuff, or most of it, is for a power supply that I'm going to build. I'm going to be building a, I'm going to be doing a whole video on building a variable amperage and current, or amperage and, or current and voltage um, power supply for very cheap, actually. Um, so, bought some banana plugs. These are actually, I wouldn't recommend them. They're very cheap looking. I mean, they look okay, but um, they were probably the cheapest thing. So, that's kind of what you get if you buy the cheapest thing. But the screws don't actually clamp down all the way. So, you have to use really fat wire or put a big, huge coating of solder on it to actually get it to um, tighten down enough in there. But, yeah, so I wouldn't really recommend these ones. But other than that, they look fine. They're gold plated and everything. Um, so, those are going to be for the power supply, or because I need some more of those anyway. Um, for making leads and stuff, um, but and then there's the uh, actual uh, binding posts that will be for the power supply outputs. I need a couple of those for that. And then the main unit of the power supply, which I bought, this was about six dollars, I believe. Um, and this is a buck converter, so a little bit different than what I was originally expecting much smaller than I was expecting it to be too, um, but this thing is supposed to be able to handle 8 amps at 0 to 40 volts, so this will be a very good at power supply actually, um, because I was looking around on eBay, I have been for a while looking for a power supply, um, just one of like the Chinese built ones, the cheap ones, and they run about $100 um, for a new one, and they only put out about 2 amps at 0 to 30 volts, so not really that great. Um, especially if you're going to run something like a ZVS driver off it, 2 amps is not enough for most projects. So, I wanted something a bit more. Now, if you want something like 10 amp output, you're going to be running into 2 to $300 range, which just is not really acceptable. I didn't, I don't really have that kind of cash laying around. So, I decided to try to build my own, and I came across this um, boost buck converter, or actually it's just a buck converter, um, for six dollars so I decided that I would go with it and see what it and this is one of the only ones I could find that was actually constant current that's why I went with this one so this one has constant current and adjustable voltage which is what I need um, so now this if you if you put 12 volts into it there will be a maximum of 12 volts that will come out so I need a power supply that can put out 
um, 40 volts, or probably more like 39 volts, just to give a little bit of leadway there. Um, so I need a power supply to put out about 30 volts, or 38 volts, or whatever I want the output to be, um, the maximum out output to be, and it'll need to supply about uh, 8 amps. So I'm probably going to use one of these transformers here. These are about 40 volts. Um, so I'll need to use a bridge rectifier diode and um, some capacitors to smooth it out before I put it into this. But this thing's actually look at pretty looks pretty simple. It has a chip here, and then it's got a large. I'm assuming a MOSFET there on this heatsink. Um, very cheaply built, especially to handle eight amps. Quite amazing. And I did test it, and it does handle eight amps. But I wouldn't um, rely on it for too long because it does heat up quite fast. So I think I'm going to need to put a much bigger heatsink on there. So upgrade that, as well as these windings on here are a little bit small for 8 amps. So I may rewind that um, inductor there, as well as replace these diodes, probably with something like, um, oh, something like this, probably. So that's a diode. Those are all my diodes there. But, um, yeah, so I'll probably replace that, those diodes, if depending on if they get hot enough or not. Um, but, yeah, so it's got a couple of LEDs on there that I haven't figured out what they do yet, but... Yeah, they switch on and off, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, yeah, so that should work pretty good. $6, not bad to handle 8 amps. Now, I was looking around, and there are ones that are a little bit more expensive that can handle a lot more current, um, but they didn't have the constant current, which I need that so that I don't fry things. So, if I hook it up to a 5.5 timer chip that is incorrectly hooked up, and I set it at the 50 milliamps range, which 5.5 timer should be fine on running on 50 milliamps, and the 50, if the 5.5 timer is hooked up wrong, it will short out the power supply instead of just killing the 5.5 um, timer. So if I hook it up to 10 amps, or 8 amp supply, the 5.5 timer is just going to go up in smoke if it's connected up wrong. So the constant current is very useful for that. Now I do have this supply here that I've had for a while. Um, this thing is not very good. I mean, it's nice because it does small projects. Um, but it only has about, it goes up to about 600 milliamps and about 18 volts. Um, so not very good there. And the current adjust is not very good either. It only goes down to about 60 milliamps. So it's not good for the small things. But, I mean, it's, it's an okay supply. And then I've also got this supply here, which just puts out your standard voltages. But sometimes I need voltages in between. So, so I'm going to be building that. And I also bought a... Um, little panel meter for the for the power supply that I'm going to be building. This was probably like three dollars. Um, so this is can handle 10 amps and the voltage is I believe 0 to 100 volts so good on that. Two of those, one for another project and then or whatever I need it for and then two little voltmeters just I decided to buy these because the same guy was selling them so decided to go with those. Those were like a dollar a piece I think. I don't Maybe a dollar fifty but yeah so 0 through 100 volts, I think. So those are real nice. Um, and then these magnets. So these are 10 neodymium magnets. Um, I believe they're 2 millimeters by 25 millimeters. And these are going to be used for building a Stirling engine generator. And I still need help with that. I have not figured it out yet. So if any of you guys know um, anything about making Stirling engine alternators with magnets like this or know of some good videos or something like that, um, just post it in the comments, please. That would be very helpful. Um, but yeah, so those are pretty strong. Um, and then I also got some stump remover, so kind of cool there, although this didn't come from eBay. But um, And why I want this is because it's potassium nitrate, and I'm going to be making some um, sugar rockets. So I'm kind of excited about doing that too, that's going to be fun. Um, so yeah, that's what I got for my birthday, guys. Um, so let's see, what else should we ramble about here? So I guess I could do a little workshop update. So workshop is... About the same, hasn't really changed much. Haven't had much time to be in here lately, but um, yeah, so it's kind of messy. Well, actually, it's not too bad, but I was actually working on this um, oscilloscope. I was thinking about trying to hook it up um, because this thing needs, um, it's basically computer based, so it uses one um, power supply for a normal computer like this, it uses normal output to power the computer part, and then the the oscilloscope part um, actually needs a weird plug there and a weird power supply, but the power supply burned out. And the problem with it, why well, I haven't gotten it working yet, is because the 
oscilloscope part needs negative 12 volts at about 10 amps, which most power supplies like this only put out about 2 amps at 12 volts, at negative 12 volts, which is not nearly enough. So I was trying to think about um, isolating one of these power supplies from ground and using the normal 12 volt rail, flipping it around so that I can have negative 12 volts to power that. So I don't know. I was just kind of thinking about that, trying to figure out if it might work or not. So I might do that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the workshop hasn't really changed lately. So yeah. Um, so YouTube. So um, I guess I'll ramble about that for a little bit. So the new YouTube comments, I guess what I think of those, um, they're okay. Um, I like how the, I guess YouTube is trying to make it so that um, there's less problems with trolls and all that. I don't, I haven't really had any problem with that yet, um, but, which is very good. Um, I mean, you get those, once in a while, those comments of um, people um, advertising on your videos saying, uh, click here if you want to make money or go to this website or whatever and all those things, but, um, which I just pretty much delete. I only get a couple of those once in a while, but, um, so I don't really have a problem with trolls and all that, but I think the you, the new YouTube comments, I haven't, I'm not quite used to Google Plus yet, but I think Google Plus is pretty nice, um, once you get used to it. So, I mean, while it is kind of annoying that they didn't, it doesn't seem like they quite figured all this out before they did the updates. Um, I mean, Google is a free, they're supplying a free, free Gmail, free YouTube, free search engine, all that for free. So, I mean, we really shouldn't complain too much if they want to change things and update things because we're not even paying for the service. We're just using it for free. So, I mean, and I'm actually um, getting paid by them now. So, I'm pretty excited about that um, because I actually am a YouTube partner and I recently, because I turned 18, I now have an AdSense account. So, I'm pretty excited about that, guys. So, thank you all for supporting me and watching my videos and... Yeah, everything like that. Um, I hope the um, small amount of ads, or maybe there would be a large amount, I don't know how many ads um, there are on my videos, but I hope you guys don't mind that too much. I'm really sorry about that, but um, the money will be coming back to you guys because I will try to um, buy some stuff, um, so more MOSFETs, things like that, um, for projects. So I have actually made more money than I thought. I was originally going to make, so, I mean, it's still not very much, considering it's probably going to be a, around $1,000 a year, which, I mean, over the course of a year, it'll be enough to buy a new camera or something like that, but if you think about it in terms of um, how much I'm actually getting, like, per day, it's only a couple of dollars, so, I mean, really, it's, I mean, well, $1,000 sounds like a lot, um, it's, over the course of a year, it's really not that much, so... But I mean, it's more than I thought. I was gonna, I I originally thought I was going to get about a hundred dollars a year, and I'm really surprised at how well it's actually doing, because I don't have that many views on my videos. I mean, I've got about half a million, which isn't bad. But um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that. So thank you all for watching my videos and everything like that. You are awesome. So yeah, you guys are awesome. Um, but yeah, and I've, I'm actually also a partner and um. I don't really see the point of being a partner. Um, you just get a couple of extra features, which there really aren't that many. The only features that I use that I really know about even are the um, custom thumbnails, which I use those sometimes, not all the time, um, which are kind of nice if you have a video that none of, the none of the thumbnails actually describe the video very well. You can go into Windows Movie Maker and I just kind of do a snapshot of some part in the video that's more that more describes what the video is about and I use that so I mean that's what I usually do but the other th and I could see why they wouldn't want to um, wouldn't want to just give everybody that option because some people would probably abuse that um, so I mean just putting a uh, thumbnail picture that doesn't even describe the video, it's not even about it, so just to get views. So I mean I could see why they wouldn't want to give that right to everybody. Um, but So I mean if, if you have over about 500 subscribers I would say you can go ahead and 
apply for a partnership. I believe you can apply for a partnership as many times as you want, or maybe it's like once a month or something like that. So I mean, if you if you have over 500 subscribers or at least a, at least 100, I would give it a try and see what you can see if you can become a partner. There's really no harm in trying. Um, but anyway, um, and then the other option, the other thing that I use a lot is the scheduled upload, which I don't see why they couldn't grant that to everybody, have everybody do the um, scheduled upload. I don't see why they couldn't do that because, I mean, it's nice for me. I really, I really like that option because I can um, upload like five videos at a time. So if I do like five videos on one weekend, I don't have to fill up you, you guys' um, subscription news feed um, with all my videos. I can um, schedule each one for like every, a couple days. I could schedule one for today and like in a couple hours and then I could schedule another one for in three days or something so you guys don't have to watch all of them in one day. But um, yeah, so I mean I think it's really nice and I really like it. But um, yeah, so that is updates on stuff. So Stay tuned for these projects, guys. They will be coming up here soon, and actually, probably right after I make this video, I'm actually probably going to tear down this VCR, which I've been meaning to do for a while. So this old VCR, that's going to make a nice tear down. Um, but yeah, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching.